Tell me how some of these triggers and signals that you've provided for us play a role in your discovery calls. Yeah. So if I'm going to come in with perspective, I'm not just going to talk about like the great world of sales because it might not resonate with that specific buyer. Different industries are thriving better or worse in this economy and different sales organizations operate differently than tech. So I might not be selling to a SaaS company that's experiencing, you know, the challenges that SaaS has experienced in the past two years. Let's uh, let, let's ask the audience, what industry do you sell into? If it's multiple, fine, but like, what is the industry that you sell best into? I'd love to just get a quick glimpse at that in the chat. Uh, go ahead, Sarah, with these, these triggers. Yeah, so um, in this world, I was imagining having a discovery call with Canva. And so I looked at um, some of the data from their LinkedIn. I saw that they've had massive growth um, over the past two years, they've increased their company size 169%. Um, their sales team has gone up 164% in the past year and 101% in the past six months. They have open um, roles for sales and customer success. And they're specifically looking at companies that they have acquired. So mm. Canva is interesting because it is a privately held company, but it is one of the top performing privately held companies. And they have acquired a bunch of different, um, I think, I think I don't know if I have it on a later slide or if we included it, but they acquired a ton of different businesses over the past one, two years, especially yeah. in Europe. So all of that makes me think, okay, how can I take this information and imagine myself, myself in the sales, in, in the sales leaders situation where he's got revenue numbers in front of him. He's got a bunch of green bodies in seat who don't know the Canva, um, uh, value prop. They don't know how to speak to um, all the different things that can get, Canva can solve for. So yeah. he's got to onboard all of them. He's got revenue numbers in front of him. So I'm just sort of like imagining that. And then on top of that, you're combining sales forces. So there's probably like not only the like sociocultural of combining different teams together, but also the challenge of like migrating all of the different softwares together. So I'm thinking about that and I'm like, okay, I'm in this guy's shoes. What problems could I imagine result from that situation? And then can I solve for that with my product? And if I can, great, because all of that creates pain for him. I think the answer to the previous question is that people buy to avoid pain. You can mm -hmm. have lots of problems, but like, listen, there are so many problems with my house, but I just ignore them because they're not causing me enough pain to buy a solution, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> I've needed new tennis shoes for like three years, but the shoes that I have are fine. They're dirty, they're nasty, they're falling apart, but they work fine. And no one has come up to me and said, invest $100 in these sneakers. And uh, it's convinced me. But right. when my shoes start hurting my feet, you bet your bottom dollar, just like Annie, that I'm going to go buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> the pain is what causes us to take action. And I think that's what you're getting at right there.